guys, what's happening? Dustin Dolby here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to run you through my workflow for how to photograph beer. How to photograph a beer glass or pint next to a bottle and make it all glow and look heroic and kind of commercial and crisp. I could see this in like a bar next to like maybe a chicken wing advertisement or something. But we're going for a nice frothy top to the beer, a nice glow, sort of like a heroic approach. We're not going for like a duller catalog shot. And we just wanna make this look nice and commercial and forthright and delicious looking. And this is an Erdinger, it's a wheat beer. Let me know if you've had it, leave me your comments below, I'm curious. So I'm gonna recreate some of these classic Erdinger looks that have been floating around and let's dive right in guys. The shot's nice and simple, but we're still gonna give a good dedicated amount of thought to each aspect of it and making it reliable. And that starts with our Erdinger. It's just here on a piece of acrylic on a workflow steel support plate. I'll link that all below, but it's also on a nice milky background diffusion paper. This is Savage Transloom Diffusion and we're already building up a small space here with the control of our home studio. That's gonna be conductive to the beer looking good once we get some light flowing. So let's use our wireless remote and just shoot it at our camera to straighten out our label. And it gets a little bit easier when you're using a beer with a symmetrical label. Now this is a simple strip box shooting against this with a speed light in it. I'll link that below as well. But this is just my base starting off point. I'm definitely gonna modify the light from here just so it looks a little less underwhelming and we can start bringing out some of those heroic characteristics. This is looking a little blue for color temperature, so I'm just gonna make an adjustment of that and maybe a hair over. And that's a nice subtle tweak, but now we're looking centered and maybe the two labels aren't manufactured perfectly centered, but I'm gonna prioritize our main label here and do what I can with everything else. So now I'm gonna bring in some diffusion, a nylon diffuser in between our strip box and our bottles. And this will unlock some really good lighting ideas. And now you could use something more expensive like the Savage Transloom. What I like to do with these discs is just double them up, the nylon ones, and then they become reasonably milky. Milky is my objective standard of diffusion here in the studio. So these are pretty close together. I'm gonna to use my remote here and just take a quick test shot. We're catching a broader area of the label. And ideally, I'd like to flatter this label, not to a completely legible degree, but just have a nice, sizable highlight on it to give it some character. You see how I had my strip box pretty close to my diffusion material? I'm gonna back this up about half a foot. And by creating more space before the diffusion, I'm gonna light it more broadly, and that'll reflect into our bottle. Let's test that out. All right, the power's a little low. Nice, so compared to the original, we're catching an even broader area of the diffuser and catching a lot of that label. And I don't wanna light this whole metallic label. I actually like how it's very bright and very dark because it conveys the material finish of being metallic. But this big highlight will serve us well and the ultimate test will be when we bring our glassware in. So let's bring in our pint glass and we'll get it nice and cozy there. Beautiful. Now the light's not gonna reflect through the other side once we fill it with beer. It's kind of showing some magic that it won't once we fill it. But the highlight's responding well, and normally I find if you make the beer look good with a nice highlight, the glassware is the easy thing. We can invoke a back glow and start to really give this scene a bit of oomph, a bit of character. It's definitely better to set the backlight up before you get too in love with your front light because sometimes it changes your opinion. So in the front light, we're using an eight by 36 inch strip box with a speed light, and we're gonna bring in another version of those as our backlight. So it's a two speed light setup with two strip boxes. And a strip box is a really nice thing for a backlight because it's linear and it just gives you a bunch of control. And we'll cycle through a ton of powers here. So it's literally like we're turning the volume knob up and increasing some life into this beer. Now we know you guys can't see through the diffusion material, but instead of shooting straight out, I'm gonna aim at a 45 to get a little more movement happening in our beer. Because at the end of the day, the gradient you make ends up encompassing the volume of how the beer is perceived. So I wanna give it a bit of interest. So let's throw this on a 45 degree angle. And we lost a little power there. See, it gives us a nice movement and it creates a dark pocket in the left, which sometimes the highlight sits nicely into. But we still have a static setup so we can increase the power. Now, you don't have to go nuclearly bright when you're shooting a beer image. Like, 
Maybe you want something there. That's completely acceptable and it doesn't have to be completely bright. My recommendation to you if you want an elevated beer shot but don't want to go full glow with the backlight is to at least shoot a speed light off your ceiling to make sure the labels are bright enough. Having said that, I think I do want to go for the really heroic beer glow today. And you see we're getting a ton of flare when we try to put that much light through the back. So we have to control this before we can get anywhere. So I just brought in our last two lighting modifiers, which are black foam core. And this is giving us a super minimal setup with a gradient, a window to shoot through, and a nice backlight. And the black foam core is not going to disrupt anything. It's just going to make sure that the bright light isn't negatively affecting our beer. We're actually rendering the edge into existence by blocking that backlight. And sometimes I suggest doing this before you straighten your item, just to make sure you're not straightening something that's blown out and a misalignment is caused by that. And you see on the right side of the pint, we have a nice dark edge going down it. So now when we pour the beer in it, I'll be much more assured that it's going to be properly exposed. And we just eliminated a lot of the risk. Okay, so it's time to crack an Erdinger here. And I'm gonna pour this just halfway full. So I can just position the glass and we'll take a few times to position it just relative to the brand name here and the backlight's looking good in the beer, but I want to get the beer just where it was before. And honestly, it's fine to take your time because I want the beer to chill out because I'm going to pour the second half of the beer directly on top. Like you wouldn't typically pour a beer because it's going to cause a big reaction, but it's half full. And hopefully that'll lead to a nice frothy result. Now I'm going to use the speed light off the ceiling for the labels and the head of the beer, and let's just take a quick take here. Okay, my flash failed there, I'm 99% sure. That happens sometimes, just as a point of discussion. Yeah, it's gonna look a lot crisper with that light, and we wanna build something up like this. Now we can use bamboo sticks, chopsticks, something to do with the enzymes, to give us a second go at the beer. And maybe I didn't go deep enough in the beer here because you want an almost boiling over the top reaction in order to get a nice frothy result. Let's go for something wild here. You almost have to go further than you're comfortable. Yikes. Hey, that's a fun one. Okay, so I wiped up for a minute and now I'm getting out a second beer. And this is what I do when the bamboo ain't cutting it. This is looking clean. That's a pretty tall head. And maybe we'll be able to get one more out of this, again with a ceiling exposure. And that's a pretty clean one right there. If you zoom into our result, you're seeing you're getting a pretty clean look throughout the body of the beer. It's really bright because it's not in an amber bottle. And maybe I should have turned the exposure down a little bit for this, but I'm pretty happy with a few of the takes we got right there. And compared to, I mean, where we started, We've just been building up exposure since. It's pretty crazy how quickly this can build up to something quite acceptable. So I'm gonna take a few of these exposures and I'll meet you guys inside of Photoshop and I'll run you through the retouching. So before we retouch our beer, I just wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different inspiring classes for creatives. I personally like exploring new skills in product photography, who would have guessed? And personally, I find there's a lot of niche classes and you kinda of wouldn't have found them anywhere else from really passionate, motivated creators. I've been following a few things here. I like that it's curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads. I've been following this product photography composing with ingredients course, and it's not something I'm very naturally talented at, so I've learned a lot from it. Class topics I think everyone here would enjoy include product photography, retouching, and a lot of Photoshop work in the studio. So the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in our description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Okay, everybody, so here we are inside of Photoshop and we have our beer image and a couple detail shots that'll assist us along the way. But this pint shot is doing the trick. I just want to retouch some of these bubbles in here because they only happened here and not other areas. So I'm going to click my main exposure, control J to duplicate it, hit J to bring up this tool, it's the patch tool, and I'm just going to grab some bubbles and resample them from somewhere else. And once you do this a few times, you can start to retouch larger swaths, like I'll try to do a big area here, but it's all just about matching the texture. So since there's a highlight in here, I'm going to try to match it to the highlight below. And it usually is pretty clean and it just takes a few seconds to touch up anything that's distracting. Okay, so I eliminated some of 
those distractions. Now I'm going to, with this duplicated layer, I'm going to make a selection everywhere I can, just a few pixels from the side. Hit Control T and grab the left node, if you're grabbing the left part of the image, and just drag it outward, holding Shift, and that will pretty much get us on a pure canvas. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So again, I'm going as close as I can, eyeballing it, Control T, and just dragging out, holding Shift from the edge. And what that does is get us on a really clean slate right away, and we can start to visualize everything and get a way better idea of what we're doing. There was a slight spill here, and I just kept rocking out with the pints because I just wanted to get all the action up top because here's another exposure, this one here. Oh, here's an example of nice bubbles. And look at it's clean. So what I'm going to do here is just hold Alt and click, or pardon me, on this no spill layer. Hold Alt and click this button to create an inverted mask. Then I'm going to click the inverted mask, which is hiding the whole layer. Hit B to bring up my brush, and I want a white brush because a white brush is going to reveal the layer if I paint it in this layer mask. So I'm going to paint a white layer in here, just where it is required to get rid of that spill. Pretty simple, right? So we've just taken a couple tweaks, but we've already improved our image and got rid of this spill. Our other detail shot we brought in was just a really bright label exposure. And I just wanted to make the point that sometimes I'll use that maybe on light mode. I already have it here on light mode. And hold Alt and give it a black layer mask. Now click the layer mask, and I'm just going to improve the labels. So again, with a white brush, even on a low flow, I just want to bring in some of the some of the brighter info from this exposure. And it kind of excited, you know, some of the metallics a little bit better. A big feathered brush and a low flow is a good subtle way to introduce something. Maybe even on the top label a little bit. I'm not going to go overboard with that, but I'm just going to put a little kiss of light with that other layer. Okay, so now I'm going to use the pen tool, which I don't do a lot of on this channel. And I'm just going to make a selection around the side of the pint glass where it's kind of overexposed. And I'm just doing this kind of crudely and quickly just to tell Photoshop where not to retouch. So I'm going to go to Paths and click this. So now I've selected this area. I can hit Control shift i to invert that selection. So it looks similar, but I'm selecting everything that isn't that area now. And that's great, because what I can do is in a new layer, I'm just going to sample a nice rich color from the beer. And I could get really precise with this. I'll do this relatively quickly. And then with a pretty heavy brush, like 60% flow here, I'm just going to paint right down here in a straight line. And usually when I do something like that, I'll take some time to respect the color and the curvature of the beer to try to nail it and maybe even use gradients. But that's a really quick example of replacing an area maybe you're not totally in love with. So the next thing I'm going to do is fade out our reflections. I'm going to make a new layer, hit G to bring up my gradient tool, and I want a white gradient, foreground to transparent gradient. And what I'm going to do with this is down here, just click holding shift to get a straight line and just bring in a bit of a white gradient so we can fade out our reflections a tiny bit. This might look even better once we use a selective color adjustment. Let's go to our adjustments and click selective color. And if you go to the white channel, there's a bunch of channels and drag the nodes down. It's going to sort of boomify for lack of a better word, all of the bright values that exist in the image and kind of lift the edges into actually a catalog white space. Now, if I turn it off, you see it was pretty radical on our labels and the head of our beer. We may want to adjust that and even bring on a black brush even on a lower flow and just remove that effect anywhere like up here where it's threatening to kind of, you know, overdo it. But for the most part, it's pretty crisp and it helps lift things into a catalog space without the stress of that being done in camera. So sometimes when you make things brighter, like this looks kind of weird over here, but this doesn't. So I might take an area, maybe I'll export everything we have and make a new layer just so the retouching can get a little simpler. And I'm going to make a marquee selection with 10 pixels of feather, and I'm going to grab this low light because I enjoy it. Control J to duplicate it on its own layer. So it's hard to see this, but it's isolated on its own layer. There you go. Control T, right click and then flip horizontal. When you do that now, we can place it over here and composite it in. So it kind of holds its ground better on the bright background. So it looks ridiculous like this, but I'm just using my positional keys to get it in the good spot. Click the layer and Alt click this to give it a black layer mask. So now I can click the black layer mask and with a white brush, hopefully you're following along here, I can just paint this in. And it doesn't have to be full fledged and I can use a black brush wherever I don't want it to be. 
but something really subtle, even if I fade that in, I can start to give it a bit of character on the bright background and cut it out a little bit better. So for a couple more tweaks, why not put this logo on the front of our beer glass? That's a cool way to use a generic glass and kind of be able to do custom work for a ton of different brands. And what I'm going to do here with the lasso tool is just zoom in and get a nice resolution and just go around our product and make as many points as possible. But with feathering, you're not going to notice too polygonal of a selection. And I'm just going to select out this label as well as the part underneath. And then we'll just duplicate that on its own layer. And with that selection present, and it took a while to get tight, I'm going to hit Control J to once again get, its, get it on its own layer, which is so useful. So now we can just bring it over here, kind of size it up, and just make it look natural. And we might want to darken the beer kind of underneath where it is slightly, as if it's, caught, as if it's casting a slight shadow. And another thing we could do, and I won't do this too intensely, but we could make parts transparent with a magic selection, a magic wand selection. Maybe I want to grab in here and take your time doing this better than I'm doing it, but hold Alt and click this to mask it. And that way we can create things that interact with the beer. And we can get pretty custom when we're doing our labels. Normally if I move something over that's kind of really highlighted over here, I'm going to darken it a little, not to make it look underwhelming, but just not as sort of fakely amazing as a label with a bright light directly on it might look. So check out our final pint here, and it's looking like a nice little delicious snack. Not too bad for speed lights and a few minutes of shooting and retouching. We did take a second to use curve layers to darken the left part of this beer bottle just to retain the crispness. So the black cards got us pretty far, but a few Photoshop tweaks do go a long way in retaining the good, sharp commercial look that people kind of come to expect if they're dealing with a half decent or half known brand. So make sure to leave your suggestions for future episodes below. I love hearing your guys' suggestions. And you can find us around the internet at Workflow, PHLO, on Instagram, here on YouTube. Uh, workflow.shop is our website where we sell all our product photography plates that we use here and custom make on our channel. If you have any questions, leave them below. Make sure to check us out around the web. My name is Dustin Dolby. It's been a real pleasure, guys. Take care.